This video is sponsored by Skillshare. We begin with shots fired outside a concert venue on South Street. One person is dead. <laughs> the internet will kill you how you want to kill yourself. Hey, out these streets, man. Much shit rough out here, you hear me? You get caught lagging, it's all bad for your ass, you know? Gato and a 17-year-old female were sitting in a car in the 9200 block of Kedvale when they were shot. The grandson was killed. The grandmother now in critical condition. Damn, it's crazy. But it happened so much to us in Chicago, it's like, right, this ain't nothing new. Nothing new. Over the last couple of years, Lil Durk has become a household name in the rap game, transcending the label of Chicago Driller straight out of the trenches to a fully blown megastar. And to get to this point, he had to hone his rap skills, bring melodic singing into his music, and soften his image for a mainstream audience. And as a result, in 2021, Lil Durk is much more pop star than block star, these days spending more time on Billboard than in his native hood. But you could say maybe Lil Durk's catchphrase should be cry now, laugh later. Because when you consider what Durk Dirk had to go through to get to this point in his life, still alive and breathing, you'd probably shed a tear too. In fact, over the years, Lil Dirk has been through so much hardship and taken so many devastating losses that many people are convinced that he is cursed. In fact, Lil Dirk told DJ Vlad all the way back in 2014 that he had already lost around 20 to 30 friends to violence. 20 friends, I like 20. Not 20 people you knew, 20 actual friends. Yeah, like 20, 30 people. Since this interview, people on Reddit have even tried to compile lists naming every single person who Dirk has lost over the years. And by 2017, when Dirk was being interviewed on The Breakfast Club, he said that at this point he had lost so many people that it was becoming routine to him. Are you are you, are you numb to the death at this point? Because you see it happen all the time in Chicago. So when it happens now, when you're on, it got the same effect. I don't know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But it'd be like, it happened every day so much, you'd be like, damn, all right. You'd get called here, they like, what's name is that? You're like, damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was just with him a week ago. Right, nothing funny. You'll be like, damn, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But it happened so much to us in Chicago, it's like, all right, this ain't nothing new. Now, if you watch the video from my Gangs of Chicago series about the war between Dirk's 300 crew and JoJo World, you'll know some of the losses that Dirk suffered early in his career. He lost his homie Lil Mo before he had even started rapping and paid tribute to his fallen friend in one of his earliest songs. Dirk also lost his day one homie from 600 D Thang to gun violence after he was tragically gunned down only age 18 in a car on the corner of 61st and King Drive way back in 2011, with Dirk honoring his fallen brother by getting a D-Thang tattoo on his shoulder, a tradition of honoring his fallen brothers on his flesh that he would continue in the decade that followed. Now, if you watch that 300 vs Jojo World video of mine, then you'll know that Lil Dirk's career blew up off the back of a little song he had called L's Anthem, a track which featured lyrics directly dissing Dirk's ops, which many have suggested sparked a deadly gang war in the streets of Chicago that would continue on for years afterwards. Ironically, after L's Anthem blew up and Lil Dirk's music career begun to take traction. As Dirk's name got bigger in the music industry, so did the target on his back and the backs of his friends. And even though Dirk was having a lot of luck in the music industry at this point, his luck in the streets was less than ideal. In fact, just as his music career was beginning to take off, he immediately caught a gun charge, eventually being forced to do three months in jail. And from here, Dirk's luck with firearms would only get worse. In June 2013, he was arrested after being seen by police throwing a 50 caliber handgun into a parked car when he saw the police approaching him. This put him in jail for another 30 13 days before he was able to bond out, with a witness eventually claiming the gun and getting Dirk off of those charges a whopping three whole years later. But if it's not gun charges getting Dirk down, it's gun discharges. In September 2015, Lil Dirk's tour bus was shot up before a show in Philly, an incident which left a man dead, in an incident allegedly carried out by a man in an OTF shirt. We begin with shots fired outside a concert venue on South Street. One person is dead. A rapper was getting ready to perform inside the TLA while Hundreds of people waited outside. Randy, do you know if there's a connection to Lil Durk's concert and the shooting? Right now, police cannot say for sure whether this is all related, but that rapper's tour bus was actually hit by at least one of the bullets. It's actually still parked right here in front of the theater, now part of this crime scene. The shooter was last seen taking off in a limousine. Our shooter was a male dressed all in black. He had some distinctive lettering written on the front of his shirt, but I don't want to identify that at this point because it could be gang related. With three suspects fleeing in a limousine after the shooting, but later getting apprehended by the authorities. Within an hour, police were able to track down that limo just a few blocks away. Sky Force 10 capturing this video of police taking three suspects into custody. It really does seem like bad luck just follows Lil Dirk everywhere he goes. But I'm not the first person to notice this, because for some years now, there's actually been a very creepy 
creepy video floating around the internet. And this video claims that there is a terrifying curse that's been following Lil Durk around for the last 10 years that he just can't escape. This is a curse that has plagued Lil Durk's entire career, inflicting Durk and his friends with devastating bad luck that oftentimes proves fatal. So today, we're gonna take a closer look at that petrifying video and answer once and for all, is Lil Durk really cursed? This video has been going around the internet for quite some time, and it shows various clips of Lil Durk and his friends in music videos, creepily pausing and telling the story of every single person close to Durk who ended up suffering a tragic fate. The first person supposedly affected by the curse on Lil Durk is Jay Money or Jay Munna. Jay Money was a close friend of Lil Durk's affiliated with his OTF record label. He was unfortunately gunned down seemingly as part of a long-running feud with a rival gang. In fact, you might already know a bit of background about this incident if you watched my earlier video on the war between O-Block and Tukerville. As on September the 2nd, 2013, Jerome Wood, also known as J Money from O Block, was allegedly set up, with J Money apparently visiting a location on the 6600 block of South Rhodes Avenue around 2 p.m. Allegedly set up by a girl on the Ops turf, legend has it that J Money was expecting to see a woman he knew, but arrived to the location to be greeted by Lil B and KI from Tukerville. He apparently attempted to flee down a gangway into an adjacent property, but he was unfortunately shot in the head, collapsing outdoors and not making it. Once the news of J Money's passing broke, Lil Dirk more warned his fallen friend on Instagram saying, RIP J Money, we just lost a savage who put tears in the Ops family's eyes. You ain't never forgotten, hashtag Oblock 300, fuck the bricks. Another fallen brother of Dirk's who appeared in that cursed video is Pluto, AKA Lil Pat. He was sadly killed in a rollover crash on Lakeshore Drive in November, 2013. With Dirk mourning Pluto's passing on IG with numerous posts saying, I don't want to post a pic or answer the phone or shit, I'm lost, hashtag RIP Pluto, feeling like Pluto. I'm pouring up for you right now, RIP Pluto. RIP Pluto, I'm sick as fuck. I seen how that car was crashed. I wish I took you out of town with me. You was the turn up of the party, real one for life. Dirk would go on to later honor his friend in flesh with a Pluto tattoo on the right side of his stomach, as well as another tattoo saying RIP Pat on his left knuckles. Dirk later revealed in the song, What Your Life Like, that the city had somehow labeled Pluto's car crash as gang related. A dirty move which essentially meant that the city of Chicago wouldn't have to contribute to Pluto's funeral costs, which would normally be the case in a car crash death sustained on the city of Chicago's roads. And Dirk Dirk broke down this snaky move by the city of Chicago in more detail in an interview with Sway. Um, my homie Pluto, dad, you know what I'm saying, uh, he got into a car crash and dad. Mm -hmm. And you know, you the city streets, if, if something happened, like a car crash, they, they gotta pay. Yeah. They gotta put money on something. Like, it wasn't nothing dealing with that. You know what I'm saying? They still ain't get no money up for his funeral saying it was game related. After those tragic losses, it's important to remember that not every single shred of Dirk's bad luck is fatal, because the supposed curse surrounding Lil Dirk also extends to lengthy and perhaps unfair jail sentences. Now, hey, shout out Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Buying trap law Ross today, I'm Big Skrrr. Big Skrrr. Big Skrrr. Do you get me? Listen, look. Man, I don't party, I'm on Skillshare in the club They're the kings of learning on the net, show Skillshare some love To explore new skills and passions, I took every class there was Yeah, you know where you can learn some stuff, Skillshare's the one Courses by the thousands, so you know they go hard Where creative people gain new skills and learn them real fast Their community is wavy, join so you can be the judge If you're lacking in skills, Skillshare helps you top them up Life is uncertain, you don't know what's coming next you might change careers, so better keep your skills all fresh Sometimes they ask me, how can I become a YouTube G? I say don't ask me, ask Marcus Brown Lee I took his course on Skillshare, cause I know that he's the GOAT He shows you how to plan and shoot a fire video How to edit your vid, upload it, and make your channel grow And you don't need equipment like a pro, just shoot it on your phone So use Skillshare at home, or use it in the club It's the best way to learn with no ads popping up don't, don't stop learning, always be preparing Telling tell, tell the truth about these skills, that's what I'm really sharing The first 1,000 people who go click that link Will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium membership And after that it's 10 bucks a month, that's a big tick Trap Lord pop up with that link in that description Wish you would click Gang, 
Come on, people, join Skillshare today. Their creative challenges and productivity classes will help you structure your time and set up achievable goals, and you will learn hella new skills. It is straight fire. Enhance your creativity, help support my channel, and click that link for Skillshare, baby. Thanks so much to them for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching, and peace out. Another face that pops up in that curse video is D Rose. D Rose is a name who you might be familiar with if you've listened to Chief Keef's music, because D Rose seems to be a pretty well known and respected tough guy on the streets of Chicago. And despite having his name linked to numerous cases, including at one point being linked to the killing of Lil Jojo, apparently falsely for the record, when D Rose's name came up in a new case, the Chicago PD were looking to put him away for good. Because eventually, D Rose and his friends were accused of pulling up on a group of younger boys at 6100 block of South Vernon opening a passenger door and firing a handgun at the group, hitting a 14-year-old boy named Venzel Richardson in the head, leaving him deceased. D. Rose was eventually convicted of this murder, being handed a hefty 40-year sentence at the young age of 17. In fact, King Von even claimed in the song what it's like to have actually been in the cell with D. Rose when he was handed that 40-year sentence. After that sentence was handed down, Dirk tweeted out saying that they're slamming all of the young bulls that he grew up with with big sentences and he wants to see him free. But if D. Rose's case is one of bad luck and perhaps maybe a little bit of foul play from the Chicago PD, depending on who you're talking to, this next person on the list saw their luck change from incredibly good to devastatingly bad within the blink of an eye. And that person is THF Bobo or Bobo. Now, Bobo's story is truly crazy. He is a close friend of Dirk's who had caught a serious charge of double armed robbery where a 40 year old man ended up getting shot twice during the crime. Now, Bobo ended up getting held on these charges in the Cook County Jail for around two years. And this was the result of an insanely tragic and unlucky turn of events because the victim of that robbery turned shooting ended up surviving three weeks after the incident, fighting for their life in the hospital before eventually succumbing to their injuries and passing away. This would mean prosecutors upgrading the case to a full murder charge. However, as a result of the victim still being alive for three weeks following the first crime, the prosecutors ended up screwing up the paperwork and missing the deadline to take Bobo to a trial. As a result, they failed to upgrade the charges from robbery to murder for over a year, leaving Bobo just sat in jail waiting. And it turns out that this actually violated Bobo's right to a speedy trial. Apparently the law states prosecutors have 120 days to file charges. And as a result, after being held for two years and the murder charges not being properly filed by prosecutors, that late murder charge would end up being dropped. Meaning that after around two years in jail, waiting to fight a murder case, Bobo would finally be able to bail out on $10,000 bond for the robbery charges that were still outstanding. Now that's an incredible stroke of luck for an accused killer. So he was seen bailing out of the Cook County Jail, wearing a gray hoodie, ready to enjoy his newly finessed freedom. However, it's hard to believe what would happen next. Because story goes, as soon as he was released from jail, Bobo jumped into a car with two friends, riding off from the jail on South California Avenue. And then, within mere seconds, a white SUV pulled up on Bobo's car and opened fire, letting off over 20 rounds from two different handguns drive-by style. The shooting car crashed and the shooters fled on foot, leaving Bobo dead at the scene a mere eight minutes after being released from jail. Now, the next batch of curses are seen in Lil Durk's music video for the song, This Ain't What You Want, with THF Bezu bringing a particular amount of misfortune into Dirk's life. Bezu was arrested by police for a 2009 murder five years after the act happened in 2014 with the police picking him up from Lil Dirk's house. But this arrest ended up getting Lil Dirk into a jam too, because while they were there to take Bezu into custody, the cops spotted two handguns on a table next to Dirk. And when Dirk was asked by the cops why he had these guns, he replied with probably one of the most gangster lines ever. He said, I got those pipes because Nigel's always be trying to take my bands. Well, unfortunately, these pipes would be taken away by the authorities along with Dirk himself. He was actually bagged on a probation violation because he is not allowed to have guns at his property after being caught with that 40 cal pistol that we mentioned at the start of the video. Anywho, with Dirk in trouble for the pipes, Bezu would be facing a much bigger rap for this 2009 murder. This was a wild case where five years before he was arrested, Bezu had allegedly approached a 21 year old man named Dominic Barnes on 4700 block of Forestville Avenue, allegedly asking what set he was before immediately opening fire and killing him. With this brazen attack, even going down in front of as many as five witnesses. After the double arrest, Dirk had posted Bezu on his Instagram saying free him and that they're both gonna come out from underneath this drama. And well, eventually they did because Bezu managed to beat these charges and ended up a free man. And Dirk would eventually get both his charges and his probation dropped. Another person who Dirk associated with from that cursed video is a man named Five Star. He'd been pushing dope outside of Chicago, selling a substance called Feralyl Fentanyl to drug addicts in Iowa. Now this is a synthetic opioid that's apparently around one-fifths the strength 
of real fentanyl, but still 10 times the strength of regular heroin. Five Star had apparently sold this substance to somebody as H, with that person going back to their apartment and giving that substance to two of their friends. Those two people who were given the substance overdosed on it in a car outside of the property, but were fortunately met by emergency responders who were able to save their lives with Narcan. However, after the emergency responders left, the man inside the apartment continued taking the substance and was found dead 18 hours later. And Five Star ultimately ended up getting a hefty 20 year sentence for selling these dangerous substances. Now, the next person we're gonna discuss isn't actually a friend of Dirk's. But one of the most strange people that's even associated with the supposed curse on Dirk is a 17-year-old fan named Maxwell Gaddo. Now, he ran into Dirk in July 2014 and posed for a picture with him, apparently taken by his girlfriend. But only a few months after this photograph was taken, in September 2014, he would find himself in grave danger. Gaddo's girlfriend was allegedly selling weed, eventually crossing paths with a guy named Advic, a prolific finessa who had a habit of tricking drug dealers out of their drugs with fake money. Gaddo's girlfriend was apparently planning to sell 500 bucks of weed to this guy Advic. Advic had apparently planned a weed heist with three other people, telling one of them to just go grab the weed and then run back to their car. One of the people who was involved in this caper was a guy named Hicks, someone that Advic had just met at a barbecue not too long before this caper went down. So Advic pulled up to the caper with a few of his friends, ready to get Robin. And apparently he decided to wait in the car and send Hicks, the dude who he'd met at the barbecue, to go and snatch the weed. So he got in the car and apparently as soon as the two ounces of weed that they had agreed to buy was pulled out in the vehicle, Hicks pulled out a gun and started firing. Gadow got shot in the back and died, with his girlfriend being shot in the face, but fortunately surviving. Grieving friends and classmates of Max Gato turned to each other for support, stunned that the popular 17-year-old senior at Niles North High School was shot to death last night. Gato and a 17-year-old female were sitting in a car in the 9200 block of Kedvale when they were shot. Now, somebody else that's not mentioned in that curse video, but certainly another big loss for Dirk is Marvin Carr. Known better as GBE Capo from Front Street and a member of Chief Keefe's Glow Gang. At 1.45pm on July the 11th, 2015, at the 7700 block of South Kingston, Capo was targeted in a brazen drive-by, getting hit in the back and the hip and later dying in hospital. Now there was even footage that was captured at the scene following this incident that is far too shocking to show on YouTube. But this shocking assassination was followed by an even more shocking situation. Because following the shooting, the driver fled the scene, going on a three and a half mile high speed chase away from the cops. With this chase ending when a driver hit a bus stop at around 60 miles per hour, around 63rd in Ellis. And waiting for a bus at this bus stop was a young mother, with her 13 month baby Dylan Harris in a stroller. But the sad truth is, that one year old baby was seriously injured by this crash and would later go on to pass away in hospital. The getaway driver in this hit who was responsible for killing that child, Antoine Watkins, was eventually convicted of reckless homicide and sentenced to eight years in jail, with the mother of that baby screaming, you killed my baby at him in the courtroom. That's right, a measly eight years for killing a one-year-old child in front of their mother. Nice work, Chicago. And nobody was ever charged for the killing of Capo. Following this tragic series of events, Dirk responded to Capo's passing with a heartfelt post on Instagram saying, rest up my boy, we was just saying how OTF and GBE back in it crazy as hell. Keep your head up, no limit. With Dirk going on once again to memorialize his friend in his flesh with an RIP Capo tattoo on his wrist. That's a lot of heartache for Dirk to endure. With this many friends and associates lost in the streets, you can understand why people think there's some kind of curse on Dirk. However, this really is just the tip of the iceberg. Two big names that are often associated with Lil Dirk are of course Rondo No. 9 and L.A. Capone. L.A. and Rondo rep Team 600 and Steve Drive, the latter named after their friend Lil Steve, who was tragically gunned down at the young age of 15. Dirk, Rondo and L.A. were all together in the music video for the song Play For Keeps, as well as having appeared together on the legendary trio Banger Brothers. And you can imagine that the loss of these two brothers would have been devastating for Dirk. Now, I broke the Rondo number no. 9 story down in great detail in another video on my channel, so go give that a watch if you want the entire Rondo story. But long story short, after an altercation at a party, Rondo and others were lurking in the streets looking for ops to get back on. And in a case seemingly of mistaken identity, Rondo ended up playing a role in murdering an innocent cab driver who just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Rondo was given 39 years in prison for his role in this unprovoked murder. Dirk reacted to the news making a free Rondo post on Twitter and telling Rondo to keep his head up while he's in jail, suggesting that they might even release some of their old music together. Yeah, we know, come the street shit, you know what I'm saying? Chilling if nobody, I won't wish it on my words in it. You know what I'm saying? If you're not, give me this head up, I do Yeah, I got a lot of songs around that ain't been dropped. So y'all tag DJ Benz, tell them to drop all the songs or drop at least one. 
So me and Rondo. And apparently Dirk also got himself a number nine tattoo too. But if Dirk lost Rondo to a case of mistaken identity in the streets, Dirk's loss of LA Capone would be an incredibly personal, direct result of the tit for tat killings in the gang wars of Chicago. On September the 26th, 2013, LA receives a call from a studio owner that he had been trying to book a recording session with. He told LA to come through to record and to come alone. LA goes to the studio and starts recording, with clips from this final session even circulating online. No, oh, fuck, I'm coming, man. Jake don't like us standing on the block. <laughs> <laughs> What that is though? Just record. Yeah though. Just record. Uh, this is gonna be a hit song, man. You recording this shit? Now, once LA is finished with this session, he leaves the studio through the back door. And it's there that he is ambushed in an alleyway by multiple people and shot multiple times. Initially surviving, being treated by paramedics and being alert and talking whilst he was going to the hospital. But unfortunately, LA would later succumb to his injuries and pass away at the young age of 17. And one year after this, three people pled guilty to the murder of LA Capone, with the main shooter being handed a whopping 45 years. In what was apparently a planned hit, the direct result of somebody giving them LA's location whilst he was at that studio. Dirk initially tweeted get well little bro when he heard that LA was in the hospital, later tweeting RIP little bro when the tragic news came through. And once again Dirk honoured his friend on his flesh getting an LA tattoo on his left arm. Now you might be thinking that there's one big name that we've overlooked so far and that's because this is probably the most devastating loss that has had the biggest impact on Dirk and his career. I'm talking about his cousin Nooski. Now Nooski was in the background of the This Ain't What You Want video with Lil Dirk and apparently at the filming of this music video there were many members in attendance from a whole variety of different Chicago street crews. 300, 600, OTF, Mubu, Dro City, Dog Pound, Lamron, Face World, and apparently more, all had different affiliates hanging out on that video set, no problems. But apparently after the dust settled, it emerged that beef had sparked off between members of these crews, possibly the result of someone having stolen some jewelry, which kicked off a bitter beef. Now there's a long history of the many intertwined beefs that Dirk and Nooski have been associated with over the years. That's not what this video is about, but let's just say in the years that followed Nooski appearing in that video alongside Lil Dirk, he would attract numerous enemies who would wish harm on him. And one of those people was a guy named Mubu Crump. He'd been involved in numerous altercations with Dirk and Nooski's OTF crew, including a big fight between the Mubu and OTF crews at a TI in-store in September 2014, where both Dirk and Mubu Crump were present. And over the years, there's been numerous escalations of this beef, including OTF affiliate Lil Vani being shot and paralyzed, with Mubu Crump mocking this situation on social media in some pretty disrespectful scenes. Hey Vern, you better go do this bro. I'm gonna put you in that thing, you gotta learn how to use it bro. You gonna beat him up for fail? Cause if you get out, we put you back in, kid. <laughs> Uh, Crump also rapped about Varney's injuries in his song OTFK. Put the muscle in the Fellow Chicago OG King Louis was shot in the head with that reportedly having something to do with this beef. And in a tragic turn of events, OTF Toon, who's actually Rondo Number no. 9's cousin, was murdered in a grisly hit where both him and his 62-year-old grandmother were shot in the head. They are a grandmother and her grandson. The two of them had been sitting in a minivan. This was at 79th and Laughlin when a gunman opened fire. The grandson was killed. Killed. The grandmother now in critical condition. So that's a lot of grisly bloodshed in the streets. And story goes, as a result, Nooski was rolling pretty deep in the streets of Chicago, always ready for trouble if his enemies pulled up. This got to the point where apparently Nooski was so well known for carrying guns, he got the nickname Nunu Got The Strap. And well, living this lifestyle often can only end up with one tragic end. And realizing this, at a certain point, Nooski's cousin Dirk wanted to get him far away from the beasts in the streets and into a safer career in the music industry. So Dirk tried everything he could to get Nooski into the studio and out of the streets, turning Nooski's nickname from having guns in the streets to his musical trademark, preparing him to release his first project, Nooski Got The Strap. So with Dirk's help, Nooski was picking up a buzz in the rap game and grinding hard in the studio, well away from the streets. Now man, since the last interview, man, what's been popping with you, man? Shit, man, just working. I'm in the studio 24-7, you hear me? Yeah. That's some new shit dropping, man. And Nooski was popping up on songs collaborating with Lil Dirk too. Tracks like At The Top and OC, so you could tell that Nooski was headed in the right direction in life with Dirk's help. In fact, even when he was interviewed in this Zach TV interview on his block, 
Nooski said himself that he was trying to focus on the music and get out of the streets at this point in his life. They got these streets, man. Much shit rough out here, you hear me? You get caught lagging, it's all bad for your ass, you know? But all this fame and his affiliations with Dirk made Nooski a big target. Around this time, apparently Dirk was dissing a lot of the ops from 051, Young Money, and Mubu, who OTF was still at war with. One particular instance of big disrespect from Lil Dirk came after the Lil Mark incident. Lil Mark from 051 had actually dissed Dirk's OTF crew on his track No Competition and ended up getting gunned down at a bus stop only a few days after. Once Lil Mark had been killed, Dirk piled on the disrespect, even making a social media post purporting to be at the bus stop where Lil Mark was gunned down. Bus stop, man. Hey, this, this, hey, 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 this bus stop right here, though. This, this, this is a real famous place. You hear me? This is a real famous place, big. Now, while this disrespect was going on, Mubu Crump spent some time in jail. And while he's there, a couple of things happen. His close friend Kurt Mack from Dro City was killed as part of the ongoing war in the streets. Kurt Mack was actually the uncle of 051 Melly, a serious and feared gangster from 051 who became close friends with Mubu Crump whilst they were both in jail. Together, Crump and Melly joined forces to wage a serious vendetta against Dirk and his crew. Crump, Melly, and anyone around Mubu or 051 were desperate to kill Dirk but couldn't get to him. So so apparently, they would settle for anyone even remotely close to Dirk. I tell you what, Mubu Crump was truly bloodthirsty. I mean, he had been seen in numerous social media posts, rolling around the city with big guns looking for ops. A lot of fake shit going on. This ain't fake though. That motherfucker ain't fake, man. In fact, in the days leading up to the incident in question, Nooski was seen beefing heavily with his opposition online. This included a tense back and forth with FBG Duck from Tukaville, with Nooski calling Duck a goofy, and Duck calling him just another clown joining the circus. Nooski went on to suggest that he knows Duck's location because of the women that he hangs around, an ominous end to a tense exchange, but it was Nooski's back and forth with Mubu Crump that was even more alarming. Crump said that he wouldn't shoot Nooski because he's a civilian, to which Nooski replied, Crump is gonna die soon, just watch. Ending the exchange by saying stop the talking, I'm gonna show you. This would be an unfortunate exchange that would come back to haunt Nooski. Because a little while after these tweets, on the 31st of May 2014, around 3.19pm, Nooski would get caught by his enemies in the streets with grave consequences. Nooski had been out buying shoes on 87th Street, where he was seemingly spotted and trailed by three enemies. He parked at the Chatham Village Square Mall at College Grove and 87th Street, and sat in the parking lot texting someone on his phone whilst waiting for his girl to come out the store. And while he was sat there, two out of the three people that had been following him hopped out of the car, walked up, and shot Nooski before fleeing the scene. At this point, Nooski was still alive. In fact, he crashed his car into the Be Fresh clothing store trying to escape the shooters. So after being shot and crashing his car into the store, Nooski was still breathing with a faint pulse. At this point, a bystander even tries to give medical attention to the still alive Nooski, but is stopped by a police officer responding on the scene. The cops say that this is a crime scene and that they're not allowed to touch Nooski, despite him still being alive. So Nooski is left there for 15 minutes, bleeding out from serious gunshot wounds with no medical assistance at which point he unfortunately passes away in front of shocked onlookers. Now, if you ask me, I would say that's pure evil from the Chicago PD, and they are just as responsible as the shooters for Nooski's death. And so, as a direct result of both the beef in the streets and the incredibly dirty tactics of the Chicago PD, Nooski is left dead at the young age of 24. But to make this even more heartbreaking, it would turn out that this killing happened only two days after Lil Durk had secured Nooski a record deal. Signing his deal like two days before he got killed. Yeah. Following his cousin's shocking passing, Dirk posted a heartfelt tribute on his Instagram, saying words can't even explain. Nooski, just like you told me, we got a win. He also tweeted out Nooski gang and thanked his friends and family for getting in touch with words of support at this horrible time. And of course, Dirk later got a Nooski tattoo on his knuckles, honoring his fallen cousin in flesh. But unfortunately, as is the way in these Chicago street beats, after Nooski passed away, the ops were dissing him heavily, suggesting that his fate was the direct result of his tweets and that he shouldn't have been in these streets. <laughs> Nooski got killed, bro. Boys have a pity, don't shoot shit. Yeah, Nooski was a ball player, y'all. That's what that's what Lil Reese said when he died. Mubu Crump very heartlessly pointed out the irony of Nooski threatening to kill him just before the shooting took place. Look, you wanna know why I say Nooski name all the time? Because Nooski told me he was gonna kill me, bro. So then it was funny to me when he got clapped. To me, that statement sounds incredibly suspicious. And also, for balance and fairness, I also just want to point out that the guy that Mubu Crump is arguing with in this video would go on to reveal that Mubu Crump actually got knocked out at that brawl at the TI in store. I remember the dog pound beat the shit out your ass, knocked you the fuck out for you double like this and shit. 
When he hit your ass, he was like this. He knocked me out. Like, come on, fool. You know what happened, fool. Okay. You know what happened at the yeah, Hold on, nigga. You know what happened? So let's keep it You know what happened when T.I. was trying to promote his clothes at the shop? Anywho, apparently unable to stop disrespecting the fallen, Crump later found himself at the very scene of Nooski's passing, mocking the tragedy, I assume, with the sole purpose of hurting Lil Durk. Them left uh, Chino. I mean, Nooski. They left his ass right here. You feel me? They left his ass up here on folks and them tweak. Buy some shoes. Y'all see, y'all see real niggas be up here though. Nigga play with me up here on folks and this bills when bitch on the news. I look like news. Crump even went as far as to say that he was with the person who did it, but they didn't want to be on camera. I'm with the nigga that did, he don't want to be on camera though. Hit his ass over right here on Pat. Yeah, and they say I'm the police. Anywho, even as late as 2020, we've seen the likes of 6 9 disrespecting Nooski's name with the sole purpose of upsetting Lil Dirk. With 6 going to Chicago to pretend to pay his respects to Dirk's fallen cousin, in the wrong location by the way, just to promote his album. Horrible stuff, but if there's one thing that's clear, it's that Mubu Crump clearly didn't have the security budget of 6 9 Because on May the 24th, 2018, Mubu Crump is photographed outside of a party along with 051 Melly. This picture accidentally gave away their location, giving the ops the drop on them. And soon after this photo was taken, both Crump and Melly were the targets of a drive-by shooting. Both were hit and Crump died at the scene, in a chaotic incident that was even captured on camera, but is far too grisly to show you on YouTube. Mubu Crump's shocking demise likely came as good news to Lil Durk, which is probably why on Back in Blood, Dirk famously says he was dissing on my cousin, now his asshole in that wood, huh? Now this might seem extreme, but let's not forget that Crump's disrespect for Lil Durk's fallen brothers went far beyond his cousin Nooski, as another devastating loss for Lil Durk was OTF. Chino. OTF Chino was Lil Durk's manager, and ironically not long before the incident in question, Chino along with Dirk had checked in with the Chicago anti-violence organization Rock Your Drop. In fact, Dirk even said that he had spoken to Chino a mere 10 minutes before the shocking incident took place. 10 minutes? 10. You were just on the phone with him and then, then he, get, he gets killed 10 minutes later. Yeah, because he was in the house laying down, because I was on FaceTime with him. He was in the house laying down. And he called, like, his girl called 10 minutes later. Apparently, after getting off the phone with Dirk, Chino stepped out to get some food from the Stony Sub restaurant at 8440 Stony Island Ave, parking outside the restaurant just before 2 a.m. At this point, according to the police, a man approached the car, opening fire, hitting Chino several times, including one to the head. Chino was driven to the hospital, where he was unfortunately pronounced dead. And while the police found no suspects, the internet detectives on R. Shyrakology are pretty adamant that 051 Melly at least had something to do with this. Bear in mind, before before he died, our old pal Mubu Crump had also been to this restaurant where this went down on IG Live just to disrespect Lil Durk. Fuck y'all. He grabbed I just grabbed all of my food. Y'all got that order for Nooski? Chino Burke. As you know, Mubu Crump was shot in a drive-by with 051 Melly, where Melly survived and Crump passed. However, Melly's good luck wouldn't last so long, as he too was shot dead at a party several years later. An incident which was also captured on video, but once again is far too shocking to show you on YouTube. And it was these incidents and videos that caused King Von to famously rap, Crump was doing all that whiffing and he ain't even make it, Melly got shot in the party, started Harlem shaking. After the news of OTF Chino's passing, Lil Durk posted the following heartfelt post on his Instagram. Rocking my drop chain for Chino and the rest we lost. Your family in my prayers, we're staying strong, still the King of Chicago album, still drop May the 12th, single on the radio, streets can't stop me, I'm still on my Lil Dirk shit. And naturally, Dirk would go on to get Chino tattooed on his left shoulder. Now for some years following the deaths of Nooski and Chino, it seemed like Dirk had managed to escape the many tragedies associated with the curse on him, as his career and safety seemed to be in a good place for quite some time. And of course, moving to Atlanta was clearly a smart decision for both his career and safety. However, back in Chicago, tragedy was never far. And in 2018, Dirk would lose yet another of his close friends, but this time not to violence but to drugs. Fredo Santana is a Chicago drill legend. Having appeared on numerous songs that sparked the entire Chicago drill movement, and classic bangers like Beef with Lil Durk and Lil Reese, My Lil Nigel's with Chief Keef and Reese, and On That with Keith. At one point, Fredo Santana even hilariously threatened to pop the entire Migos, and he even at one point appeared as the villain in Drake's music video for Hold On We're Going Home. Although he's affiliated with Front Street, Dipset, and the BDs, Fredo Santana was respected all over the city for his contributions to Chicago drill music. But unfortunately, Fredo was also heavily into prescription drugs. 
apparently the result of street trauma and what he described as PTSD-like symptoms from having lost so many friends to violence in the streets. And this drug habit would begin catching up with Fredo Santana around March 2017, when he was hospitalized after a seizure. At the time, blaming lack of sleep for the issue, but following the hospitalization, Fredo Santana was diagnosed with epilepsy and given medication, but he would continue to suffer from multiple seizures. And at that point, he stopped seeking medical attention after they would happen. So it didn't take long for him to find himself back in the hospital, this time with kidney and liver failure. Posting a picture of XXXTentacion visiting his bedside on Instagram, along with a caption that said, been in here since Friday, doctors say I got kidney failure and liver failure, I'm getting back to normal, sorry to all my fans, Turbo Bandana will not be dropping tomorrow due to my health issues. Thanks to everybody who prayed for me, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. Fredo would later reveal that he was found on the floor shaking and bleeding out of his mouth. After this, he tweeted out suggesting that he would be slowing things down and heading to rehab. But sadly, only three months after this incident, Fredo Santana would pass away in his own home at the young age of 27. Following this heartbreaking news, Lil Durk took to Twitter, saying he'd lost a lot of friends over the years, but this one really shook him. Dirk would later speak on Fredo's passing with DJ Vlad, saying that his death had the entire city of Chicago mourning. Like, that fucked the whole city up. I just say like all the love he was again. You know, it's hard to imagine that after so much loss, the universe could keep taking from Lil Durk. And while we've now taken a look at every single person that was named in that Curse of Lil Durk video, there's still one big name who isn't in that video. Someone who was very close to Durk, who he lost incredibly recently. I'm of course talking about that final devastating loss that Durk suffered, King Von. When Lil Durk brought King Von on to the breakfast club with him, perhaps it didn't seem that significant at the time. But looking back at that interview with hindsight now is chilling. To me, the most unforgettable moment Moment, is where King Von tells Charlemagne about the murder case that he beat, seemingly only making a half-hearted effort to even deny committing the murder. What's the story? What's your story? My story, shit. Yeah. I just got to jail for just beat a body in two attempts. Like, so you was in, you was in jail for two murders? Yeah, I'm one murder and two attempts. I just beat. How you beat that? What you mean, I, beat? I mean, you didn't do it clearly. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I mean, like, I, I mean, you yeah, had to throw young black like, men in jail. Like, yeah. Jury, like you know, like, huh? like you know, jury. Yeah, look, you know. You gonna yeah, beat it. You so, gonna be, you gonna beat it if you didn't do it. That's all. Von essentially beat this case on a technicality. This was due to his co-defendant accidentally spilling the beans and placing himself at the scene, then telling the feds that he was gonna snitch on Von before changing his mind and taking all the charges at the last minute. This left Von free to go, and I actually did an entire video breaking down all the details of Von's murder case. If you want to go and watch that and learn more. But beyond Von's brazen attitude to crimes that he'd committed in the past, elsewhere in that interview we also got an insightful tidbit from Lil Durk too, where Durk told Charlemagne that he would constantly be on the phone with Von in jail for the three and a half years that he was waiting for his trial, with Dirk essentially saying that he only knew Von from the streets, and that while Von was facing those charges, they never discussed Von being a rapper. What made you want to sign King Von? Because he got a whole story behind him. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying, he just real. You know what I'm saying, his music. Um, I've been with him his whole journey in jail. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, like he ain't never say nothing about rapping. Dirk was definitely a real one for helping his day one brother beat his charges and then help him into the rap game once he got out. And in the months that followed this interview, it seemed like with Dirk's help, King Von was going straight to the top. Von was racking up millions of views with his crazy story series and other bangers, but eventually bad vibes would come and knock in for the OTF crew in Atlanta. Because in February 2019, both Von and Dirk got into an altercation that was captured on a security camera where they allegedly robbed and shot a man that they already knew. They say around five in the morning, morning on February 5th, Lil Dirk, whose real name is Dirk Derek Banks, and his co-defendant Devontae Bennett were seen on camera involved in shooting Alexander Witherspoon, a person police say they knew. As a result of this incident and the pending case around it, childhood friends Lil Dirk and King Von were legally prohibited from communicating or being around each other. Isn't you and Dirk, your, your, your probation or whatever is such that you're not supposed to be associating with other people who are part of the case? So is it like yeah, a thing I mean, where you're not so, supposed to be around each other? Yeah, so yeah, we, me and Dirk, we, ain't, we only see each other like at court, if we got court or some shit. Now, a lot of people said a lot of strange things around this time. In fact, there was even one chilling YouTube video that was made before King Von passed that suggested Dirk was going to sacrifice King Von to get out of this case. Now, for the record, that's obviously cap, but it's definitely creepy when you consider what went down not long after this. Because on the 6th of November, 2020, King Von is shot dead outside of an Atlanta night nightclub following a hand-to-hand -hand altercation with Savannah rapper Quando Rondo. A fistfight apparently stemming from a budding beef between King Von and Quando's label boss, NBA Youngboy. Anywho, the shooting of King Von was captured in its entirety on that nightclub surveillance camera too, quickly circulating all over the hip-hop community and for many people becoming front page news. And if you think about it, the fact that King Von's demise was captured on camera is pretty terrifying. Because at this point, you can now say that Mubu Crump, 051 Melly, and King Von all had their tragic final moments captured on 
on camera. And considering how much disrespect for the dead seems to arise in these gang-related feuds, you can imagine just how much all of this violence being captured on camera can amplify the devastation for both the deceased party's friends and families, as well as the disrespect that one's enemies are going to pile on using that footage too. After his passing, Lil Durk honoured King Von's memory to the fullest, posting a picture of Von on Instagram with the caption, My twin gone. Love you baby bro. D-Roy. And of course Dirk went one step further, putting a picture of King Von on the front cover of his hit album The Voice, along with script saying Long Live Grandson, one of King Von's nicknames. Now look, I'm sure a lot of you have got to this point in the video and are fully convinced that Lil Dirk is indeed cursed. But there's something really important I want to get across with this video. Lil Dirk is not cursed. There ain't no curse. Curses aren't real. People have pointed to this curse before and said Lil Durk needs to be avoided at all costs. But the reality is, when you come from the trenches like Lil Durk and his friends do, your life is likely to be filled with more pain and suffering than the average person. And a lot of comments on that original curse video echo this sentiment and say things like, it's not a curse, it's called being from Chicago. And that's facts. Durk has really been through it in his life. He's probably been through as much pain and suffering as a real soldier fighting in the trenches of armed warfare. But how can we say Lil Durk is cursed if he is still alive winning, making millions of dollars after over 10 years of hardships. Dirk isn't cursed, he's blessed. Because he made it through more challenges than I could ever possibly imagine. Going through all of that suffering and today becoming a superstar. In 2021, Lil Dirk is one of the most streamed musicians on the entire planet. And it fills me with great hope to see him winning and shining after everything that he's been through. He truly had to go through hell to get where he is today. And if you're going through it, just know that Lil Dirk has been through what you're going through times 100. So when you're feeling like things can't get any worse, throw on some Lil Dirk and remember that you can survive anything that life throws at you. Coming out the other side stronger, richer, and moving forwards no matter what. That's what Dirk and his music are all about, and that is why they call him The Voice. Thanks so much for watching that video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please make sure that you subscribe below. And if you're enjoying me and my work, definitely head on over to my second channel, Trap More Ross, where I'm uploading more regularly unscripted content. Love you guys. Thanks so much for the support, and bye.